Yeah. So as I can see, we are live now. And uh, one more time, thank you for everyone who joined today's session. This is a very special session. We have specifically only blockchain, DeFi, NFT, and crypto-focused VC investors, and only blockchain, DeFi, NFT, and uh, crypto finance uh, startups. And uh, um, I I'm very excited, guys. Uh, for, first of all, we all know that the uh, DeFi and crypto finance industry is uh, hitting new records every day and every week. And uh, uh, this uh, session is uh, our way to establish some kind of bridge between traditional VC and startup sector and uh, this amazing DeFi and crypto finance world. Uh, because uh, all the investors participating here are not, how do you call it in DeFi, lemmings? So not lemmings, but very smart, very, uh, very um, detailed, uh, focused uh, VCs. Mm -hmm. And um, we have really great startups. I hope to see quite a number of deals after this session. But let us start uh, again, as usually, uh, by introducing the investors on board. And I want to give the word to our great uh, friend of in mind, Oliver Blakey, who already participated in a number of sessions. Oliver, could you please um, introduce briefly yourself and uh, your fund, your investment focus? Yeah, I um, appreciate you for, for having me again. Um, I'm Oliver, one of the co-founders of Ascensive Assets. Um, we're generally a lead round investment firm, um, now sort of focusing mainly on DeFi and traditionally, and sorry, the transitioning over to uh, the NFT space. And yeah, we're sort of fairly active and, you know, like to sort of adjust and pivot our internal strategy, you know, as the industry progresses sort of on a weekly basis at the moment. Thanks a lot, Oliver. And um, yeah, I remember when we uh, talked with you about fund, fund performance, uh, some time ago, it was really shocking. I wish uh, a lot of traditional VC investors uh, watch our session and uh, and get uh, the same impression as I had. And I want to give a word uh, to the uh, friend of uh, Oliver and uh, another amazing investor, Etienne Van Cruze from Netherlands. Uh, Etienne, could you please introduce briefly your investment focus? Etienne. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Awesome. Um, good day, everyone. Um, investment focus is uh, mainly uh, we invest with in digital assets, uh, wide variety, uh, like global. And we look for um, protocols, mostly infrastructure layer, um, those building blocks uh, that are going to move the industry forward. Um, of course, in the last two years, we've been uh, heavily involved in DeFi related, the decentralized finance type of uh, setups. And as Oliver mentioned, we've also uh, got our feet wet um, lately in the uh, NFT markets, uh, looking for the most, uh, the best setups, best teams, uh, um, ambitious founders, uh, so you will. It's really cool. Thanks a lot, Etienne. And now you already know with Oliver each other, you probably don't know other investors here. And uh, in addition to finding great investment opportunities among startups, we will also be glad if investors also meet each other and uh, expand uh, your network with other VCs. So Iana, uh, from, Ian Emerson from Fabrique VC, could you please uh, briefly introduce your focus as well? Sure, thanks so much. So Fabric, we're slightly broader than your crypt typical crypto fund um, across infrastructure. So layer one blockchains, layer two scaling, dev tools, anything really data rich, developer driven, delicious um, sort of projects. And then DeFi, of course, NFTs, healthcare, where it relates particularly to secure computation, for example, genomic data, which has to be obfuscated as that's very sensitive. And then finally, future of work, um, so social tokens and governance models. That's cool. Thanks a lot, Anne. And I want to give a word uh, to Alex M. Yeah, this is um, the fund Crypto Miria uh, from China. And uh, Alex, could you please briefly introduce your investment focus? 
Pierre, so I'm Alex, a management partner of Crypto America Capital. So we do invest in blockchain crypto projects all over the world. Uh, and our focus, uh, you know, uh, actually we look for uh, everything. Yeah, but we do prefer to invest in uh, layer two solutions, uh, uh, synthetic uh, assets and uh, uh, some infrastructure solutions. Uh, with our one of the biggest uh, media group in uh, China, which includes Coinstock of China, Mars Finance, uh, Adensa Media and other big players in the media industry, we act as a smart money strategic investor and help our portfolio to scale the business model and create brand awareness uh, in Asia in, uh, and enter in this market. That's amazing. Thanks a lot, Alex. And we have another smart investor in this field, Patrick Soch from Petrock Capital. Patrick, could you please uh, briefly introduce your fund and your investment focus? Patrick, cuckoo. <laughs> okay, I guess uh, maybe Patrick has some. I'm not sure he joined yet. Ah, oh, okay. Maybe he's a bit late. Then yeah. he will introduce himself after he joins. And uh, I suggest that we switch now to the pictures of amazing startups. Uh, dear startups, I remind you that you have only five minutes strict limitations on the pitch timeline. You can share your presentation, your pitch deck, of course. And uh, uh, then we have unlimited Q&A, as many questions from investors as they have. And uh, the first one to pitch today, I want to invite Elena Sinelnikova, co-founder at Mitis DAO from Canada. Thank you so much, Nelly. Thank, thank you, everyone. Uh, very nice to meet you. Very impressive panel. Uh, our startup is Meet is DAO, and we introduce you the layer two DAO protocol. So for, you, for those of you and you all are in blockchain, you probably know that DAO is decentralized autonomous organization. Uh, but we uh, come differently. And in, in the blockchain world right now, autonomous organizations are taken as probably voting mechanisms and the governance, but we have a different approach approach and because we think it should take on the real business and that's why in our platform anyone and it's not only blockchain people that come in and do the business uh, is in the form of they can bring their own organization and manage it they can open their own business uh, on on the platform they can create the dubs they can create nfts they can trade nfts on the platform and at the same time enjoying uh, low cost, no gas costs, uh, high efficiency, high scalability. Uh, team that we have uh, for this uh, startup is myself, uh, and I am also the leader of CryptoChicks organization. I started it in 2017, and now we are in 56 countries, so I can do the job. Uh, also, I have here on the team Kevin Liu, uh, who is present here. So he is a product lead and a co-founder uh, of Meetis DAO. So he is behind the designing and uh, delivering the product, uh, and he can introduce himself. But I know that under his belt is startups with the uh, uh, for the mobile apps with the millions of downloads. Uh, Yuan Su, uh, he's our genius, uh, he's a tech lead, started programming at age, uh, age of six. He was involved in the design of the IBM Hyperledger project, uh, and he is the one that forked uh, optimistic rollout, and this is what we're building on. He's not here, unfortunately, because this is our building stage, and he is with our development team in his building. We also have two advisors, Meta Palikar, so he's CTO and co-founder, Casper Labs. And we have Ralph uh, Gertis, uh, so he is the co-founder, ScaleSwap, and he, we will see him today as well. These are our investors and partners. So far, we raised our seed funding of one million. Excuse um, me for interrupting yes. you, Elena, but uh, it seems for me that you think you are sharing the screen, but you are Oh, I, I know. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Yes. No problem. So you can start sharing right now. Don't start from the All right. uh, yeah. from this place. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Yes. Uh, team uh, founders. So this is our partners and investors. Uh, one of the uh, one that came recently, just a blockchain fund. This is OKEx uh, body of, of funding. So we are right now working with the um, exchanges to list. Uh, we... As, as I said, we're building on the layer two. 
uh, and we also implement in the um, staking and pullback mechanism. Uh, so every uh, person that come, every organization, a person that comes to our platform will have their own passport and will be tracking the uh, reputation power and uh, also state, stake and pullback mechanism. It means that in order to do any operation in there, uh, you, you will have a combination of your stake which is money and the reputation power. So the higher your reputation power is, then uh, less stake you can give. Um, layer two gives, uh, of course, the efficiency of the low gas cost, high scalability, uh, full functionality, and we are using microservices. We can plug in, plug out the model modules. So for example, a freelancer module we can plug in, and then we can onboard the freelancers that can find a jobs and we perform the tasks, freelance tasks on the platform. Uh, other use cases, it's, uh, as I said already, like NFT producing, uh, NFT uh, trading, crowdfunding, uh, volunteering, gig economy, um, so, so these are these are the use cases that we are right now uh, developing and exploring. But usually, in essence, it's the building of businesses and building an entire organization, and also acting as an individuals and a business at the same time on the platform is what we implement. I, I will not uh, stop on the demo as much. Yes, we developed uh, our POC and is focused on the freelance uh, module and we are launching the freelance module at the end of March uh, this year. Uh, but the main thing again, so you have to come uh, take from this presentation that it, it is you acting as a peer on the peer peer to peer platform in the form of a DAO structure uh, through staking and pullback and building up your reputation power. Uh, the business model, so we're taking 0.055% of every transaction and transaction if, if you are making payment, for example, to someone on the, on the uh, our platform. Medium of exchange and the token is a METIS token. Uh, so we have the distribution of how we distribute. And if you have any questions, we can touch on it as well. And this is our game plan for the four months. And of course, we have a long-term, short-term plan on goals right now. Uh, we just opened the private sale and that's what we're, why we're pitching today. Our public sale is scheduled for the mid-April. Thank you so much. Do you have any questions? Amazing, Elena. Thanks so much. And I hope that uh, the first part was also clear to investors, um, despite the fact that you didn't share it. So questions from investors. Oliver, Etienne, Anna, um, Alex, any questions? Yeah, I can, I can fire off um, yep. if nobody else minds. Um, a couple from me more on the, on the business side. Um, so the the seed round was closed, obviously, I presume, in being led by uh, Waterdrip and, and OKX. Um, what valuation was that at in comparison to the current round? And um, additionally, uh, the funds that's raised by this, is that then governed by the DAO itself or is it separate? As in the, the people who are building this, the founders decide on everybody's salary and the DAO just controls the platform or does the DAO actually also control who gets paid, how much they get paid and where everything is distributed? Uh, okay, uh, I think I can answer that. Uh, what Drip and OKEX, they, they invest in this, uh, actually OKEX is the private round, they just invested their fund here. And uh, you know, from uh, our last round, we have been building uh, our uh, MVP on layer two. So it means on early April, we're going to uh, ask community members to try and experience how to build a DAO on layer two. And we're going to show how easy it's going to be. And there's no cost. They can build up their community and can manage all the collaborations over there. So uh, as to the second question about the DAO, uh, actually our concept is that DAO is a collective of individuals. So people collaborate to, you know, to contribute, to collaborate. So that's their own decision to, you know, to manage it. Uh, so it's not DAO control the whole payments. It's the collaborators. They, they negotiate. 
So yeah, we give the platform, the power is all on people and the businesses that come in into the platform. But for example, for our own operations, for example, we open the ambassador program and we will be managing like everything that ambassadors do for us, this is going to be managed through the platform as well in, the, in a uh, decentralized manner, peer to peer. Okay, Sorry, uh, again. Was it clear for you? The uh, yeah, yeah, just another one for me. What is the, the valuations and the timing of the previous round to this round? So you mean when we uh, raised the money? So Kevin, I'm not sure if I understand the question. Did you understand the question? Oh, yes, yes. Sorry, it's mm -hmm. muted. Uh, yeah, for the, uh, for the seed round, is the valuation is uh, 15 million. And uh, for now, yes, it's uh, the primary round is 30 million. Yeah. 15 okay. or 50? 15. Okay. Uh, yeah. 30. Um, 30, sorry. 30 the, million now. The seed, is, the seed was uh, 15. Um, post 15. Money and the private sorry. is 30. The seed, yeah. round, the seed round is 15 million. Okay. And okay. for now it's 30. Okay. Uh, yes. When was that uh, round finalized and closed? Uh, February. Early February. Okay, so two x valuation in less than a month difference, right? Yes, because we will deliver at end of this month. Okay. Yes, gotcha. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all from me. Then. Yeah, we also woke up to the news today that scammers are using our token to sell because they now people <clears throat> sell it, buying it from the scammers for nine dollars. Interesting. So, yes. Um. Uh, a question from my side. Um, uh, you mentioned the word layer two a couple of times. So I was wondering if you could like dig deeper into what you mean exactly with layer two. What, what's the actual technology that's underpinning this? Um, uh, yeah. What is it so based on? So this is an optimistic roll-up, and uh, okay. yes. Yeah, yeah, so, so unfortunately, our CTO is not present here, but I, I can explain you to the best of my ability. So okay. yes, this is a layer on top. Uh, we fork the optimistic roll-up. Uh, so the yes, so there will be the transactions that is done on chain. So everything is on chain, uh, and we have. I know that we have a separate virtual machines for separate businesses. Um, and so the transactions itself on the on the on the layer two on our layer two on optimistic rollout will have no gas costs, uh, but they will be settled on Ethereum blockchain. We build it on top of the Ethereum blockchain. Is that answers your question? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Good. Any other questions to Mitis Dao from other? Yeah, I, have, I had another one. Um, sure. How is the token actually accruing value? Like where is that? Uh, where is that happening? Where's that key point into your model? Uh, Kevin can answer yeah, because he's designed the token economy model. Uh, sorry, you mean the value of this token? Where is it capturing value in this network on this platform? Uh, you know, from this token uh, perspective, uh, this token is a governance token at the beginning, mm -hmm. and people need to stake to create their. A decentralized organization here because as Elena explained, uh, staking is the commitment that you would like to do this stuff seriously. You're gonna perform at your promise. So that is the part we, the token can be used here. And uh, you know, we also uh, like every transaction in the system, uh, the, the contract will collect like 0 0.05 percentage of the uh, transaction uh, fee, we call protocol fee, and this protocol fee will be collected uh, to serve as the value foundation for MITIS token. So I, I'm not sure if I answer your question. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's good enough uh, for now. Okay, that, that, that's all for, for my end. Okay, good. thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Patrick, yeah, have I have a pretty short question. Uh, thank you very much, guys, for this presentation. Could you please just name your uh, closest competitor or competitors and your key advantages? Uh, our closest is uh, probably Aragon. Uh, key advantage on Aragon, if you try to create a DAO, it costs like $100 to do. And then also, if you're not blockchain savvy and if you try to use their platform, like I couldn't. 
if you if you tried. Uh, so because uh, and we are cater for the general audience, not for the blockchain savvy people. Yeah, okay. one point to add that uh, for Aragon, the uh, the main purpose for the DAO is for governance, community, you know, raising proposal and vote yes or no. But for us, the DAO is the structure to support all these business operation on layer two. So it's like everyone they can launch a DAO and they can invite a community member here to run their community. Or let's say they, if someone hope to launch your D app, you know, the app means a lot of uh, uh, community members can be can be joining, right? It's it's the community ran the, the app, so the DAO can be used to for for the project to uh, run their community to manage the, all the community collaborations. So, to our perspective, the DAO is a, a much more real entity here to manage the community. It's not just a voting vehicle. Uh, yeah. Is it clear now, Alex? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Ian, uh, Patrick, yeah. do you have questions? Yeah. In terms of go to market, how are you planning on attracting projects to build using Metis? Uh, we are planning, so that as a, for the launch, we're planning an NFT airdrop. You know, for for people to build NFTs, uh, to trade NFTs uh, at the and we, we do it at the beginning of April. So this is this is our strategy to get people on the platform of first bloom because NFTs right now is so hot. Uh, and we also right now employ the um, influencers all over the world. Uh, thankfully, I have the network of fifty six countries behind my belt, and we are distributing those among all the countries. Today, I just got off the phone with uh, Turkey. Uh, so we have the whole Turkey on board right now with all the influencers, everyone. Uh, and Turkey is really big uh, on the in the blockchain space. So this is just, just an example of how we're planning to do it. Good. Uh, Jan, are you satisfied with the answer? Yeah, thank you. Good. Uh, Patrick, you joined a bit late, or so did you if, you, if you missed the presentation, we will send it to you later. Uh, but if you have any questions, you, you may ask. Yeah, thank you, thank you. And uh, thank you, Elena, for sharing. Uh, actually, my questions were asked, so I actually got the answer. Yeah, thank you. Okay, amazing. Thank you. Oh, Elena, Kevin, thanks a lot for your presentation. Great job. Now you can stop your uh, presentation. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, it was very good. Pleasure. Thank you. Uh, I just want to remind everyone uh, again that immediately after the end of the session, I will send uh, all the startup, uh, all the links to the startup profiles of pitching founders on in mind uh, to you guys by email or Telegram. You will have all the pitch decks, all the information, and uh, you tell us with whom of the founders you want to connect directly. We will gladly introduce you immediately uh, to discuss the deal and uh, to invest. And uh, one of uh, the investors who joined late, uh, Patrick Soh from Petrock Capital. Patrick, could you please uh, give uh, a brief introduction of your investment focus? Hi everyone, yeah, thank you. Uh, it's really a pleasure to share this stage with so many brilliant minds. Yeah, uh, Paro Capital is based in Singapore and we invest mainly in NFT uh, projects. Yeah, so uh, our portfolio now involves uh, projects you, you guys probably heard like Radiant Protocol, Public Main, Star Atlas, and, and the list goes on. Like, but uh, the most recent involvement we have is uh, Radiant Protocol. So we pride ourselves as the only VC that invested in them and I guess uh, the efforts that we give are really on the ground. And if you're looking to launch communities from the ground, uh, and, and yeah, you can reach out to that rock capital. Yep, thank you. Okay, amazing. Thanks a lot, Patrick. And thanks for joining one more time. I want to give a word to another startup, Talking Place from UK, and the founder, Dmitry Knox. Dmitry, the mic is Hello, yours. Hello, thank you for having me. Good morning. Good morning. You can share the screen and start your pitching. Five minutes maximum. Yep, thank you. Should be able to see it now. So hello, my name is Dimitri Knox. I am the co-founder and investor relations officer of Token Place, which is an online trading platform which aggregates liquidity from 
leading cryptocurrency exchanges into one single interface that's very simple to use and combines the best prices for virtually any coin that you wish to purchase. So we are in the fintech, fintech industry with a business to consumer model. And we have five members, three of which are full-time. We were founded in uh, January of 2020. So this was you know, right before COVID. And uh, just as a side note, I can't disclose who, but one of the largest crypto exchanges uh, in the world took interest in us as a partnership. Uh, as I'm reading, actually, my apologies, it's a bit, I can actually inform you now, it's Bitstamp. And we already have eight exchanges connected which have a database of over 5 million active traders monthly. And these are uh, pre-COVID numbers. So it's, it's growing con constantly every day. And with COVID-19 as an accelerator and catalyst for uh, contactless transactions, uh, many countries providing stimulus relief for people who are affected. And a lot of this money is just being dumped right into crypto. And along with, of course, all the institutions. So there's just a huge rampant surge of uh, institutional and retail uh, interest in crypto. So this is just only going to continue to boost the need for a product like us, which uh, in terms of our competitors, we have uh, very few direct competitors, which I'll get to in the next slide or two. So most of the volume comes up from 25 exchanges and 43 million traders are registered on exchanges, 35% uh, which are American, and the rest in mainly Europe and Asia, and specifically China. And uh, one key statistic we found out is more than half of traders, 50%, have two or more exchange accounts. Because again, what's one major problem with the cryptocurrency space is you can't, if you want to buy a specific coin, it's not available on, on every exchange. If you want to buy Dogecoin, you know, it's not on it's not on many major exchanges, like especially if you're in the US where you can't access Binance. Uh, if you want to buy all sorts of different coins, there's different spreads of uh, volume and prices. And it's a real headache. And it's a big caveat to this space how you need to have so many exchanges just to access all the coins you want to buy in store. And uh, so the near term potential of the market uh, of the potential profit and market terminal subscriptions is estimated at more than two billion dollars. So for our big picture, uh, twenty percent of our share is potential market share because with the forty three million active crypto traders and more than half of them having more than two crypto exchange two crypto exchanges or more. Uh, the terminal subscription revenue is not dependent on shifts in user behavior because and with our model with how we're making money it doesn't matter if bitcoin goes up or goes down we, can, we are a subscription-based model so we're constantly making money our pre-covid estimate was around i believe 11 dollars per month and th that is pre-covid after before the stimulus checks before all the you know extra money got dumped into the crypto market and even more and more people who aren't as very tech savvy or finance savvy who want to get into the Bitcoin and crypto action and want to buy certain coins. It's just a real, a real headache to find what exchange and having to sign up for each exchange. So we found out that typical holders account for about 40 percent of the cryptocurrency space when 60 percent, which is the more the newer, as you call it, newbie traders as a trader myself. Uh, a key sore point is when they watch um, Bitcoin go from 20,000 in 2017 to 3,000 later on. And um, this is more of like the gambling, you know, people who emotionally trade when they see major increase and decreases in price. So we, we transact monthly off these users. So we, again, it doesn't matter if Bitcoin goes up or down in the long term, but there's always going to be that demand for traders who want to have access to a simple platform, which that combines almost any coin that you want, instead of having to jump between exchanges like Coinbase, Binance, Gemini. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, quite a large number of uh, traders, more than 50% have two or more accounts. And uh, the most popular trading strategy, which isn't really a strategy, but it's how it is. It's impulse trading. Oh, they see a coin go up quite a bit. So they buy, they want to, uh, it's, you know, FOMO, fear of missing out. And uh, 
slightly less popular with like daily trading, you know, like also called scalping, which is slightly uh, similar and like trading news when you hear of Tesla buying, you know, $1.5 billion of Bitcoin. So that's another big driver in Bitcoin when it went up 20% in one day because Elon Musk announced that Tesla would be buying um, a lot of Bitcoin. So as uh, some of these I already mentioned, so common headaches traders face is the high volatility, uh, lack of professional trading practices. Many, many traders do not know what risk management is. They don't know what, uh, you know, basic risk management, trading, technical analysis. And then even bigger is wasting time looking for coins because you need to sign up on so many exchanges. Uh, you have to go through identity verification for most exchanges, major exchanges. And it's just a lot of hoops to get through just to buy a coin. And by the time you achieve this, you know, your coin may have already moved a considerable amount. So it's, it's a time limiting and it's really, it's a real headache for the crypto space. 30 seconds left. Thank you. So this is our terminal. It's very, very simple, very user friendly, unlike a lot of exchanges where it's cluttered with menus and many interfaces. So it's really quick uh, onboarding process. You do KYC once, so you don't have to do it through 20 exchanges. And uh, we're based off an API key management system. So we don't touch users funds. We avoid a lot of legal and financial headache because we're not touching anyone's money. We're not an exchange. We're, we're an aggregator, not just a platform, but an aggregator. And so, so we prefer to, um, so we're different because as I said, we're not another trading platform. We're a single window into the economy. So here are our competitors. The biggest one being maybe Bits, Bitscap or Three Commas, and they're not even direct competitors because they don't offer the same features as us, especially with, because those, you need to have technical experience with connecting to the exchanges through API keys and token place with our later stage of the project. It's all automatic. KYC, you do it once and it's automatic for all exchanges. So you don't need to have gr crazy technical ex experience, blockchain experience. It's really simple. It's really user-friendly. And that can't be said about many exchanges or platforms, regardless, even our competitors, which yeah, are thank, very few. Thank you, Dmitry. Thanks a lot. But unfortunately, I have to make hard stop. Uh, you can answer yeah. the question of investors. It would be unfair if uh, one uh, speaks uh, more time than uh, another one. Of course. Uh, the thing is about fairness, yeah? Okay, so questions from investors, please don't hesitate. Who has questions? Yeah, maybe maybe I'll go for it. So you mentioned that you have um, competitors in this space, definitely. So maybe you can share more on how you, what's your mode and you've probably done a competitor analysis. I'll let you share more. Sorry, what was that last part? You, uh, something about our competitors? Yeah, maybe you can tell me more how you, how you guys co uh, compare to the other projects that are similar in the space. How would you fare? Right. So uh, one of our biggest advantages are we're uh, simply we're more affordable, we're, we're less expensive. Uh, a lot of our competitors can get pretty pricey with their different tiers of plans. But more importantly, we offer uh, seamless integration of all exchanges automatically. We also offer order splitting. So you can buy a portion of your coin on one exchange and a por another portion on another exchange. And another big thing is, you know, setting up accounts with all our competitors. You need to manually make accounts at each single exchange, which de defeats the whole purpose of, you know, having a, a program or platform that's supposed to help you reduce this headache. With Token Place in the later stage of our product, it's all done automatically. You don't need to submit your identity documents, uh, you know, 20 times to different exchanges it's all seamless and automatic. And on top of that, we're less expensive than the competitors. And we also will be offering a fiat gateway, which is unheard of than any other of our competitors, indirect or direct. Patrick, did it answer your question? Yeah, cool, thank you. Awesome. Oliver, Diana, Jan, Alex, uh, do you have any questions to talk in, please? Yeah, just short one. Um, is it possible to see on your uh, platform, your terminal, unrealized uh, total or unrealized margin PL from all accounts? Yes, it's all seamless here. I can even show you some example uh, 
example uh, photos of the interface. So it's, as you can see, you, you can see all your holdings, uh, your profit loss, it's big br br uh, front and center. You see all your holdings uh, across what exchanges, what percentage or dollar euro amount. Everything is all super user friendly and it's all front and center. You don't have to dig through a hundred menus to find you know specific pieces of information, especially across all the exchanges. Thank you. Good. So any more questions from investors? If not, oh, Etienne, Etienne wants to ask something. Yeah, what is the, uh, the backend deals you're making with these exchanges? So what's great about token places, we are, um, we, we're dual beneficiary with the exchanges. The exchanges want to do business with us because we bring volume and liquidity to them simultaneously. You know, we, of course, we benefit off our subscription base because they're uh, allowing more places for the plat users on our platform to trade. So uh, like I said, we bring volume and liquidity. So it's a dual partnership. We already have eight exchanges. Uh, and Bitstamp is uh, our largest official partner. So it's really uh, dual, it's user-friendly and it's very uh, interconnected and benefits both sides. So it's exchanges will want to do business with us. So the eight, the eight partnerships you have right now is just a 50-50 uh, split on whatever fee you, you chop off per trade? So, well, it's kind of. So it's like... Uh, so whoever wants to offer us like an incentive, you know, uh, route your users to our exchange, will give you, you know, X percent. Uh, yeah, exactly. So give you a certain percentage of uh, as an incentive, like a referral, basically, for going to that exchange. Think of us as like the Uber or like the Uber of, of you know, in PayPal. So we're just connecting and making it super simple. Etienne, uh, is it um... another thing I wanted to ask there? The, the pricing, the pricing you're you're um, kind of like aggregating on your platform. Um, would it be possible on your end then to uh, to put up like an algo, for instance? Um, how fast is it to uh, have those type of uh, trading activities? You're asking like, what's the limit of trading activities? Yeah, like on on your platform, would it be possible for anyone that like connects to your platform or signs up, a, signs up as a user to uh, like have an algo running? So that's not available in the very beginning stage of the product. There will be as it's actually right on the bottom, there will be a, a vote for that. But yes, in, in, in essence, and later in the future, yes, there's a, totally the opportunity for allowing bots and algorithms, you know, traders who use algorithmic trading and they can take advantage of us so that they can, uh, their bots can take liquidity from the best exchange from all our connected exchanges, yes. And there's, and the limit is as much as the, as the exchanges themselves can hold. So it's virtually unlimited. Okay, that's all for me. Good. Um, yeah, obviously I have always questions. Um, how are you going to compete with three commas? Obviously, with them being like 75% of Binance's referral market, they're also the largest options provider on Binance and Deribit. Um, like they have such a monopoly on the market that they can just like push everybody else around, right? What is the plan for that, basically? So uh, the plan against uh, three commas is their, uh, the user experience. So as I mentioned before, there's uh, it's a lot of these platforms, you know, and I've used three commas and all the uh, all of the competitors myself. They're not very tech friendly, and in terms of their dominance in the space, they still don't offer some of the features we have. We're we're more affordable. It's a you know cheaper month uh, cheaper month uh, purchase uh, monthly subscription. And we offer uh, one 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 stop setup, like sh one stop shop. So you sign up once with us. We we connect you to all the exchanges automatically. With that, you need to go onto each exchange. You need to sign up. You need to do the identity verification. And it's uh, you know it's you got to do all the work yourself. And then you can use their platform, which still doesn't even offer the same features as us, like the 
like the hidden order feature or like real chart trading because they're just using mostly like algorithmic trading when we offer you know normal retail or institutional trader access and the algorithmic trading so we're all we're best of all worlds like the uber or paypal of uh of crypto gotcha thanks and then who is actually going to be the custodian of the, the capital right so the, the exchanges, we don't, we, we use an API key management system. So we don't touch anybody's money. We don't hold it. We don't, we don't even tr trade it. We're just connecting them automatically through API keys to the exchange. So we, we're not a custodian. We're not an exchange. We don't, we don't touch anyone's money. So I'm still at basically, I'm still at risk on the exchange side, right? There's no even I guess middle third part, third part. Yeah, we're not a, we're not a middleman. We don't touch anyone's money. Okay, that's the okay, beauty of it. Yeah. Okay, I think that's all with questions uh, for Token Place. Correct. Uh, you will always be able to ask questions privately when we introduce you after the session. Thanks a lot, Dmitry. Great job. Please uh, stop your presentation, and I want to invite I, I want to invite to speak another startup. Uh, from UK officially, GeoDB and uh, the founder, Luis Gelado. Luis, welcome. Hi. Hi, everyone. Thank you very much for having me today. How are you, Nelly? All good? Awesome. Thank you, Luis. Please uh, share your presentation. Uh, okay. I hope you have it. And uh, five yeah. minutes. Okay, let me share. Okay. Don't let okay. me interrupt you, okay? You see my screen? Yes. Okay. Uh, play. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Luis Gerardo. I'm a CEO and co-founder of GeoDB. Uh, so let's jump directly into the project. Uh, so we started GeoDB back in 2019, and this was based on the existence of three big uh, issues and problems within the big data industry. Okay. So problem one, uh, most of the world currently is making decisions based either on guessing or using their gut. So they would probably be either wrong or lucky. Problem two we are facing. Companies are either not measuring anything or they're measuring bullshit metrics and data, okay? And problem three, no company from our perspective will be able to compete you know, uh, in this e digitalized economy without a database-orientated decision-making process. You know? So we think that within the next 10 years, 95% of corporate and strategic decisions are gonna be based on the analysis of data. So the solution, GeoDB is building this decentralized blockchain database network, which connects users and companies and allow them you know, to open access to quality data, analytical tools that's willing to satisfy this blossoming off-chain and on-chain data demand that is currently in the world, while at the same time solving one of the main issues of the big data industry, which is rewarding the true data generators, which is us, the users. What's our mission as a, as, a, as a company? Well, it's basically helping the world learn from its data while bringing uh, a little bit more fairness uh, and trust to the current big data industry. And the big question, why now? Well, basically, as I said before, the data market, big data market is very inefficient. Both sides of the industry, data generators, us, the users, and data consumers, they are facing big challenges. No, it's what we call a broken market. The market has grown huge, but there's not enough you know, market architecture you know, to satisfy the current uh, demand. Market size, and we are talking here about the business intelligence data, data market. It's currently reaching $300 billion per year and expected to reach $600 billion by 2025. This is basically divided 50% in the acquisition of raw data, 20% in the acquisition of uh, you know, analytical tools and 30% is what's being paid to big data consultancy companies to you know, uh, develop big data projects. Regarding competition, well, it's rather more complementary than, than the risk. You know? there, we have two big blocks, uh, traditional big data providers and analytical companies. Uh, they haven't been innovating too much uh, in the last decade. No? So they are uh, potentially becoming you know, partners and probably also uh, uh, buyers of, of GeoDB. And then we have an, another big block, blockchain projects database, uh, which uh, we probably have heard of. Uh, they have a much more like sort of B2B focused approach. We are focusing on users and how can we offer them the needed tools 
to uh, build value on top of their data. So some of the milestones of the companies we started in 2019, you know, we've been running our testnet for six months already. Uh, well, these numbers are a little bit not updated. 250,000 active wallets within our data uh, generator platforms, more than 250 million uploaded data points to a testnet. Uh, we've already closed three uh, equity rounds with $6 million rates so far, 2,000 equity investors, and already closed uh, 10 business partnerships since we uh, started. Basically, we are trying to build this data Lego concept in which we can connect networks around uh, so we find more places in which user-generated data can be commercialized. Uh, from a product perspective, as I said, Tested was launched six months ago. We are uh, deploying our first MVP uh, by the end of March and our full uh, V1.0 uh, main version by the end of this year, which is called the Odin Protocol, in which we are introducing DAO governance, uh, data ecosystem and marketplaces, oracles, and potentially also a, a sort of crypto, crypto fund that we cover, that would be governed by the DAO with a part of the uh, value that's been generated within the, the network. Uh, regarding token, token economics, uh, well, I'm not, I, won't, I won't stop here too much. We have a binary token system. Uh, the GEO is used to reward users for the data they generate. And the Odin token is used as a governance token within the Odin platform uh, for network participants, uh, governance, staking rewards, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, from a company business model perspective, uh, GDB will be exploiting all of the business opportunities within uh, the Odin protocol. So we are going to be becoming data providers. We're going to be building data marketplaces. We're going to be running nodes, oracles, you know, of course, geo and Odin holders. And we will be taking part of the governance uh, of the DAO. Uh, we have an internal team of 16 uh, tech uh, people, four founders, uh, four people now building up, you know, community marketing and uh, business relationships. And we are currently working with an external uh, tech team in Ukraine, uh, which is a full six member team uh, with deep expertise in blockchain and DLT. And yeah, that's it. I hope that was on time, very fast, and now happy to answer your, your questions. Amazing, Luis. Thanks so much for being exactly on time, like Swiss watch. And uh, yeah, questions from investors. Please unmute yourself and just ask. All right, maybe I'll go first again. Yeah, sure. so you guys put yourself as a B2B solution provider, right? Uh, maybe I would like to learn more about your business development team. Is there anyone that's handling the partnership with the current traditional um, partners in the corporate world? Well, yeah. So uh, basically, we are we are running two two types of partnerships currently. Okay, so we have like the more pure blockchain partnerships. We recently closed two very interesting, uh, you know, deals. One with with Ocean, and the other one with Link. We are currently running uh, a, a Link Oracle. Uh, they thought it was very interesting uh, as a use case for them uh, to put on on chain, you know, user generated data regarding uh, smart contracts. That's running, and that was announced. A couple of weeks ago, Ocean, we are sort of, you know, combining technologies. So our data sets generated within our ecosystem will be available through their, you know, protocol and their marketplace. And then we have the other side of the partnerships, um, uh, which is more traditional uh, business. For example, we are working with a Swiss company uh, that uh, has deep expertise in consumption information. So we have a lot of, you know, potential buyers for uh, data that has to do with you know, consumption. You know? So we are uh, deploying uh, a data uh, application, which is called GeoScan, with which you can you know, scan your consumption tickets, and then you will be grabbing that uh, data, and that will be available you know, through our network and also externally. You know? So there's a lot of use cases in which you know, data that's being generated by, by users, always anonymous uh, data. So it has to do with, you know, full device information, location, connectivity, how you use your phone, uh, apps that you're using. Well, it's in, uh, we, we want to call us like some sort of data aggregator, okay? So it, it, it comes very easy for data uh, buyers, you know, to find uh, several types of data within our, our network with the, without the difficulty of having to you know to deal with many potential data generators. No? So the same way as we find in the digital industry, many aggregation data platforms, for example, for 
traveling. You know, what we want to call us uh, this sort of full uh, data, user generated data aggregating, which you know it makes it easy uh, uh, to access data, quality data, confirmed data, uh, all in one place. You no, know? so yes, we have the, uh, one person currently, you know, handling all of the blockchain partnerships. We are currently closing the partnership with also with, with one inch. We were in touch with Binance as we are gonna be using BSC as our side chain for all of our network transactions. Uh, we also closed a deal with SmartKey, a very big uh, company, which is gonna be sharing data through our network. Uh, and we are, you know, working on the technology right now. And then of course, uh, you know, uh, in talks with many business intelligence consultants and companies so that they find in our platform uh, uh, an interesting and efficient tool to, uh, to, to access data, which is one of the pains they are finding currently. You know, there's, there's no standards in the industry, so it's difficult regarding price process to ac actually you know, acquire data. Thanks. All right, cool, thank you. Patrick, thank you for the question. Uh, I want to ask uh, Iana, Alex, Oliver, Etienne, do you have any questions to Luis? I don't see. Yeah, probably not for the moment. They keep okay. it for private conversation. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Louis Fabich. And uh, you made a great job. See Bye -bye. you. And I want to give a word to another startup uh, that is called uh, ScaleSwap. Very few, uh, very fresh. Uh, uh, star in this sector, and uh, the, there are two co-founders here, Ralph Gertes and uh, Stan. Yeah, both are here. I see you. So who will be pitching? <laughs> it's me, Nelly. Great, Laurent. Mike is yours. Okay, thank you very much for having me. Um, I'm sharing my screen. So... Um, I'm the co-founder of uh, ScaleSwap, um, and we are building the next generation IDO launchpad on layer two. This is our big mission. And a little look back from the blockchain uh, fundraising evolution started all with ICOs, went over IEOs on uh, central exchanges and then the IDOs came really up with different metrics um, low initial circulating caps and, and, and let's say real decentralized fundraising and we we are convinced that now it's the time for IDO powered by layer two um, because this is uh, causing definitely some headaches uh, in that in that area our main advantage is very uh, bold and and uh, uh, compromised so it's uh, cheap fast and fair so um, cheap and fast obviously because we are using um, a layer two um, scaling protocol so um, we have um, a big advantages on on, on gas fees uh, but also on uh, execution uh, time and um, our big goal is also to be uh, the most fair um, um, launch pad um, because we are not convinced of pure lottery system and stuff like this. We have a very sophisticated scale score, so a reputation and loyalty scoring system, um, which goes far beyond uh, just uh, counting the tokens that someone is holding, but it's holding time. Um, it's also how, how many of the tokens you're still holding in your wallet, how, in how many pools did you participate, how many of these pool tokens you still hold. So it's a 360 degree um, loyalty scoring system. And if you have a high enough scoring uh, score, then you have a guaranteed seat in the, in the private part of the pool. So we believe that the community, the DeFi community uh, also earns something like this and is not um, dependent on pure lottery. Apart from that, we have also strong emphasis on, um, on security. Also, we all know what uh, happened, let's say, also in, in the very recent days um, in our area with hacks and stuff like this. Um, so this is a, a big thing for us. And, and uh, we, are, we are very glad to have Stan as CTO, who's at the same time also security expert. Um, and um, we also um, are building definitely new features, which we believe um, are um, will be 
um, a game changer, let's say, for for uh, these type of launch pads we are launching. A little um, view on uh, the stack and ecosystem. Um, so we have an, an uh, we are let's say ba we are based on Ethereum. So we also don't call ourselves um, a Polkadot project, um, but we are building on, on Ethereum and have some, some bridges. We are an Ethereum um, project and um, we um, are building on layer two scaling protocol. We have our application layer where we have also plans to enrich that uh, in the version two with further functionalities. Um, the first one and very interesting one, which enriches the, the, pool, uh, the launch pad itself is an autopilot function that allows you to automatically participate in a customized way in, in, in upcoming pools, which um, we believe is a, is a very um, handy uh, tool for, for the ones that don't want to be in 100 Telegram groups and doing endless white, white listing uh, processes. This is our competitor landscape. Uh, so we, we are well aware that there are more, <laughs> that it's an emerging area, let's say, but not all have also exactly the same scope like us with our version one. So it's really the last step before Uniswap, I call it, Launchpad. Um, and some of our newly popping up um, competitors uh, have, have a little bit of different uh, focus area. So the main ones are um, Polka Starter, um, TrustSwap, and um, Paid Finance Ignition. Um, and um, yeah, I can't go through all of that, but um, several things are already mentioned where we um, differentiate from the others. Um, we um, have, um, if you calculate that for sure, we, we are not yet live, but um, our circulating market cap, including um, the, the liquidity provision to Uniswap is um, 364 mil, uh, um, K US dollar. And the fully diluted market cap is 5.6 at the at point of time at uh, Uniswap listing. So there's uh, pretty much room, let's say, um, to, to uh, get to, to the next levels. Um, I'm sorry that the, the figures are not 100% updated, especially paid finance. Um, um, after that hack happened, uh, the significantly different um, figures at the moment, which is not updated on that slide yet. I think um, they would be happy with the figures that are currently on there after the hack. Sorry? I think they would be happy with the current figures you're showing for paid network after <laughs> yes, the hack. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, so this is our team. I'm very proud of that team. Um, so definitely no, no, no uh, pictures, just pictures, let's say, on, on, on a website or on a deck. Also very enthusiastic team and just a little background information, um, which made me even more proud. Um, I announced that um, we're going for an angel round, a 40K little angel round. And after announcing that in our weekly uh, all hands call, four team members directly contacted me. They want to uh, invest by themselves. So angel round was closed in um, one hour after our team call. So um, this dedication, I really love also from, from the team. And we have a great um, advisory board with Lars, uh, digital marketing um, 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 veteran. Less, and this is our smart uh, investment uh, circle with Lester, Ben, and Matt. Our token metrics: uh, We are um, we started fundraising on Monday with the first um, la last week with the first pitch with the target to to, to close a seed uh, round of 200k, and four days afterwards there was a huge momentum. We had already allocations for seed and private round um, at 100% of the target amount. Um, which developed then up to now to a demanded allocation of around three and a half times of what we actually want to raise. So there's a pretty big interest so far. Um, if we um, deduct, let's say, the, the um, liquidity provision to Uniswap, which will anyway be locked um, from our side, we have a circulating cap of uh, 224. We have a pretty um, restrictive uh, vesting. So also all um, investment rounds are, are uh, sorry, all investment rounds are um, vested, uh, shorter for sure, but um, the first month will definitely be um, vested. And I think this is also important for, for a smooth, let's say, transition on, on Uniswap. 
Um, we are a very token-centric project um, and um, we emphasize um, on <laughs> and analyzed also deeply on all, on all aspects regarding demand and supply. Um, we don't play around with dividends or stuff like this. Um, and um, we have a high rate of, of burning our tokens. We yes. 30 seconds left. 30 seconds, okay. Anyway, the last slide. So um, we, we are um, fully convinced that we have that we can drive the demand. Let's say we are with a very vibrant um, um, community, and with our um, let's say metrics and um, our um, our scale score reputation system will have also an impact directly on the supply side because ho holding, let's say, our token, but also the pools token is, is very interesting for them. We will incentivize strongly liquidity providers instead of doing staking. Maybe we are the only DeFi project in not doing staking. Um, and um, we have a locked Uniswap liquidity. So um, I believe we have a very good strategy also on that side for a healthy token development. So that's it from my side. Amazing, Ralph. Thanks a lot. Great job. And uh, questions from investors. <coughs> yeah, I'll, um, oh, oh, go ahead. Yeah, um, sorry, I'm, I'm right. I cut off that. Um, a quick one, um, or two, I guess. Um, do you have a liquidity provider exclusive for this on launch already, or are you talking to anyone? Um, and two, will the cap I saw Ben on the advisory board. I yeah. know him fairly well. Will Ben and Four Seasons be structuring the cap table? Um, I've built um, um, a council of smart investors that are already fixed and where we already agreed on an advisor agreement. This is uh, Ben, um, Lester and Matt from Magnus Capital um, and X21. Um, and they are um, defined that together with uh, Kirby and myself in a dedicated round to make a strategic cap table where we see um, which partners and investors bring the best mid and long term values, including deal in incoming deal flow for projects and all these um, and parameters. Um, we are, and therefore we could have closed, let's say, the round also earlier, but we are really emphasized now on getting the best partners on board. This is a very important thing for us at the moment. Okay, gotcha. And on the terms of the, the liquidity, um, are they bringing in, um, I mean, I know those guys fairly well. Is, is Ben and Lester bringing in uh, like uh, John from Dark Pools or like uh, have you, have those conversations started going on yet? Um, no, but I'm also not 100% sure on that uh, question regarding liquidity. So um, some of the investors agreed that they will um, provide li their, let's say, invest or their, the tokens that they get, they will put, let's say, on, on Uniswap as, as a liquidity provision. Um, but we don't work with a, with a separate liquidity provider, if you if you want. So I mean, for the, not not for not for your token, for the platform itself, right? So, say in twelve weeks, you know, when you continue to sort of like pump out new projects, yeah. are they is there going to be an exclusive liquidity provider for those projects that sign up, right? Uh -huh. um, we are we are thinking of a, of a, of a partnership, but we did not yet um, um, force that. In um, we were Adam, we were let's say tailoring the last things in terms of. Um, in terms of uh, uh, conceptual stuff, we're also thinking of having the reputation scoring maybe um, mirrored in, in an NFT um, as, as an option. So we are going through a lot of uh, topics at the moment, but uh, this is definitely on our list. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, all good from me, Nelly, thank you. Who else wants to ask questions? So, yeah, sure. question from Max. Oh, sorry. It just looks like I'm going to someone. Oh, you got it, you got it. <laughs> okay, uh, let's uh, start with Alex and then Ian will ask, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Don't get offended, just by alphabet. All right. Uh, well, so just a short question. You know, it looks like nowadays the key advantage of, uh, well, IBC uh, la idea launch pad, uh, restaurant launch, launch pad is not only about technology, but mostly about community around um, this launch pod. Uh, yeah. So what's your plan uh, to increase community around your launch pod? Uh, what uh, will you do to uh, provide uh, uh, projects uh, uh, 
a really good community on your platform? So um, thank you very much for that question. Um, also in the team, let's say we have, uh, so we know that um, building our own community, let's say, will be a very um, um, strong uh, key, let's say, key success factor. We have very strong people in there with uh, Jesse as marketing lead, Kirby, very well connected, let's say, uh, in the space, very knowledgeable in with DeFi projects. And especially Lester, um, having Lester on board, we will, we will overall um, are doing in the next weeks uh, um, a very strong marketing uh, campaign, a very strong influencer campaign with around 40 influencers. Um, and um, we will have, we're working together with several agencies out of different, um, different uh, core competencies. And we go there, I believe, one step further, not just having the typical content provision, PR and, 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 and social providers, but we have one specific German agency, which is um, focusing on data, deep data analytics and uh, analyzing competitors, um, communities, followers into depth, um, where are overlap, overlaps, what's the behavior. So we go very deep also into, into that analytics uh, area. And um, out of this, we will drive also our campaigns. So um, we feel very comfortable that we will uh, create a very vibrant uh, community, which will then be also for sure beneficial to, to every project that launches on, on Escape's web. Guys, thanks. Ian, please. Yeah, so what layer two are you using? Why, how do you come to that architecture and are you married to it or can you switch? <laughs> it was a long journey, yeah. but uh, I want to give the word to Stan. Yeah, hi, hi guys. Um, so we researched different layer two solutions and we decided to uh, go uh, with Polygon, Matic Polygon, because they are really uh, in the production state. If you look on Optimism, Zika, Stark, Zika, Sync, these are all good solutions, but the state of the solutions is not production ready. Uh, instead, Polygon is really ready for deployment. And we built now our solution on Polygon with different bridges and relay infrastructure. So, so we have synchronization back to Ethereum main chain from Polygon. Therefore, we call ourselves a uh, launchpad on Ethereum. And maybe just to add, um, and I don't want to yet um, um, reveal that 100%, but um, it will be a little bit a different user experience than you know it um, if you yeah. were using dApps on, on, on Matic so far. Um, we were there pretty innovative to make the user experience the typical MetaMask one click um, as, um, as uh, comfortable for the user as, as possible. So you you wouldn't uh, you don't need to switch MetaMask in our solution to interact with layer two. You right. just stay on layer one and interact with layer two. Thanks. It's clear for you, Jan, now. Yeah, I mean, if if we have time, like I would follow on to suggest. You know, we have just go on, ask something else. I mean, <laughs> or don't hesitate. If it is not, uh, nothing confidential, uh, please feel free to ask your questions. We agreed with everyone and I hope no one is in a hurry because we are a little bit running out of time. It will be not one hour and a half, but a little bit longer session. Uh, but I think it is also great because like more than 20 people are watching us also in YouTube right now. And it is also great to learn from both startups who are pitching and investors who are asking questions because the questions you ask are very different uh, often than uh, traditional VC questions. Right, so, I mean, you said that Matic or now Polygon is production ready, but in your roadmap, you're aiming for May this year launch with V1 and then Q3 for V2 and Optimism, Arbitrum, various other solutions are having launches in well March or this month, next month. So like those, those two statements feel at odds. Yeah, you're right. Um, as I told you, we spoke with Optimism uh, and we spoke also with ZK guys, ZK Sync. Uh, unfortunately, not, not ZK Stark, but ZK Sync. And we believe their solutions are really, um, really far uh, in the production 
or to the production, but we don't know. We simply don't know if they will be really in production. Nobody can know until you uh, deploy your solution to the main net. Therefore, we decided to go the, nor, nor, the, uh, the secure way mm -hmm. and to build on solution which is already working, uh, work and proven by the community, right? Uh, that doesn't mean that we will not use uh, optimism and ZK in future because even Polygon uh, disclosed now partnerships with these um, technologies. And by the way, um, we will use so-called relay technology, Beconomy, I don't know if you heard about this, and Beconomy will use ZK rollups in their solution. Therefore, we will, somewhere in our architecture, we will have rollups, yes. <laughs> great, thank you. No problem. Okay, great. Uh, Patrick, uh, Etienne, any questions or you prefer to follow up privately? Um, yeah, there was, there's no question from my side, but I would strongly urge everyone to go for it because uh, yeah, this team is really solid and uh, Kabim is uh, uh, one of the close friends of mine. So he's actually the guy behind the scene of uh, Radium Grove as well. So yeah, kudos to the team. Oh, Certainly thank you not a much. show. Certainly not a show. <laughs> <laughs> we saw that, Patrick. Uh, one question yeah. for you, Ralph. Um, um, uh, if you go back to the, the screen, you made a, uh, a comparison between other um, IDEO type platforms. So uh, one of the earlier slides. Yeah. One question that keeps coming up when I talk to other investors um, or project founders is it's a pretty obvious one. The space is not that big, I would say, yet, mm -hmm. right? With all due respect. Um, what is your, your, your argument there to protect your community users, investors from one, oversaturation, mm -hmm. and second, that you're actually um, bringing projects on there from a certain like quality standard to host their IDEO. Um, what, what is your, wh walk us through, or can you elaborate more on your um, quality insurance of the, the amount of projects on the type of projects you're gonna host? Right. Um, unless you want to become like uh, a McDonald's of ideas. Uh, oh, no, definitely just push not. Push out any hamburger, right? So no, walk no, us no. through there. Uh, By the way, I like I love hamburgers, but uh, not not on my not on our uh, platform. Awesome. No. Um, now we are definitely aware of. Um, also, especially let's say the first two, three needs to be really high, high quality prime projects but also the the whole pipeline let's say later on needs to be really high quality and um, we are already now building building a council that um, that takes takes care of, of due diligence of uh, we are preparing metrics which are deciding for us on a very basic level what what qualifies and then let's say in a second stage we look at at the market demand at, at competitors at um, if they have real um, real key success criteria that they that they met, let's say, um, and um, we believe with this. Um, so there will be definitely a dedicated council. And to the second part of your question, it's the community. The community so far is not really in the game, not at Polka Starter, not at Pools, not at Paid Network. They are, you know, in the Telegram groups, they hope to get some somehow an allocation for their 400 bucks and then they're getting a lottery. They, they can also go to, to a kiosk and pay a lottery ticket, you know. But um, we want to make that different, you know. We, we want to create that loyalty with the with the with our community. They shall be. They shall know, you know, if they are really loyal, and no matter if they have hundred bucks or, or ten thousand bucks invested, they can get a guaranteed seat in our pool. If they are really loyal, and they, it's very transparent what we are doing, and our 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 scale score system. So we take them serious. You know, and, and at the second stage, we also want to implement, um, we don't know if we can get that most likely in version two, but um, we, we will have the pre-selected prime ventures at, at let's say our pre-selected ones. And the community um, also based on our scale score, if you have a minimum scale score, they can vote them up, let's say to the top level, and then they get a date, 
you know, scheduled. So that the users also have the feeling, hey, I have here, um, I, I'm, um, they take me serious, you know, my uh, opinion also counts. So we want to go there a little bit new paths. We want to be more transparent than the others. It's <laughs> transparency is not a big topic in DeFi, <laughs> as uh, all of you know. So we want to set also their new standards in community transparency and that the people feel secure on our platform. Thanks for that. Are you satisfied, Etienne? Come again? Are you satisfied with the answer? Yeah, for sure. For the answer, we have to see it in practice, right? But uh, thanks so much, Absolutely. Ralph. Uh, it's a good start. <laughs> yes, that's true. Okay, amazing. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Ralph and Stan. Great job. And uh, you can follow up with all investors privately. And uh, right now, I want thank to... Thank you to all. Yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot. Sorry for not making pause, pauses and uh, be, between my words. Yep. All right now I want to give a word uh, to another startup from Israeli, Solid Block, and the co-founder Yael Tamar. Hi, Yael. Hi. Thanks so much, Nelly. How are you? Awesome. Thanks a lot. Uh, please uh, share your pitch deck. And sure. Start. Anybody needs a bathroom break, water, anything? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we didn't consider uh, the need for the bathroom break uh, for one hour and a half session. Okay. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Sorry. This is not my deck, obviously. So I'm trying to figure out how to do this. Um, all right. There it is. All right, guys. How was, how's everybody? Uh, I'm Yael Tamar. Okay, good. Uh, I'm Yael Tamar, uh, co-CEO and co-founder of SolidBlock. Out of 300 trillion worth of real estate market globally, only 1% today is tradable. Those are public REITs and publicly traded real estate companies, which creates a huge gap in the market, right? Our mission at SolidBlock is to make real estate work for everyone. I come from the capital markets background. I started work, working on Wall Street about 18 years ago, uh, continued on to private equity and M&A, financial engineering, and I invested a lot of money on behalf of other people. Uh, when it came to investing for myself, specifically in real estate, I realized that real estate investment is closed to many investors because of the big amount of money that you need to start investing. You can't access good deals and your money is locked up for many years, right? So Solid Block enables investors to buy and sell any asset at any time, anywhere, just like NASDAQ for real estate. We created a platform that transforms assets into tradable securities, connecting asset owners to asset investors through our token issuance platform and our partnerships with leading trading platforms, exchanges, um, distributors, brokers, and other industry partners. We have a live marketplace and we soft launched it and we'll, we'll do a, a hard launch campaign next month where we listed six projects right now. And this is just how the marketplace looks. Uh, we make property accessible through lowering capital requirements to just five to $10,000. We create a global raise opportunity, which is unprecedented in this market. And we obviously provide liquidity for the real estate space. Our initial use case is the Aspen coin. We were the tech partner on the deal. So it raised $18 million using our smart contract and tech platform. Right now it's trading at a 28% premium. And um, we earned $200,000 in revenue from that project. It's trading on T0, which is a security um, a security token exchange, digital securities exchange. This is a textbook case, textbook tokenization case. There were 22 investors on the deal. And as it was listed, right away it went up to 250 within a month. And now there's over 800 investors in that deal. Uh, a, a good volume uh, is, there is a good trading volume every month. And like I said, there is, there is a healthy premium. Our competition includes some big guys like Polymath, Vertalo, and Securitize, which are basically uh, security token factories. Uh, we're focused on real estate only. We are also a marketplace. Uh, that's one of our differentiation. And the second one is the, the fact that we're focused on uh, 
partnering with ecosystem uh, with uh, design partners such as exchanges and uh, providing a global liquidity pool for security tokens. Uh, we have quite a few assets on our marketplace today, mainly commercial, but we do have uh, a fund of residential uh, real estate. And this is our roadmap, our tech roadmap. Right now, we established ourselves as leaders in real estate asset tokenization space with our issuance platform and marketplace. We were first movers in the market. Now, our next step is to actually utilize our knowledge in finance to build products that are based on security tokens. It's not enough just to tokenize. Actually, as many of the speakers before us, you know, utilize DeFi and other uh, are the things that the crypto market has to offer. So we're, we're building a financial services platform to geared towards uh, digitized, you know, securitized um, real estate products. So number one, index, index funds, which is basically similar to an idea of a SPAC, where we'd ha we'll have funds uh, that will collect different security tokens uh, as soon as they're issued. Uh, based on different verticals, for example, North American commercial real estate or South American residential real estate. Um, Cross-listing and inter interoperability of exchanges. There was one startup here before aggregating liquidity pool on the user side. Now, our product is actually uh, providing a, a tool for exchanges to use to connect to buyers or sellers on other exchanges, right? So if there is uh, a deal listed on, on, on one specific exchange, it can find a buyer or seller on a different exchange, right? Without taking these users out of the system. Uh, collateralization of tokens, this is basically an extension of what we see as a mortgage, you know, mortgage or a loan or, or a mortgage backed loan in a traditional bank. You know, every, anybody can be their own bank, right? Or anybody can offer banking services on our platform. And finally, right now, obviously, SolidBlock is a centralized platform. We decide which projects come into our platform. Our board of directors or you know, board of real estate advisors decides which projects are, are good. Now, we want to decentralize that system. And so we're building what's called a solid coin, uh, solid coin uh, decentralized marketplace where uh, we're bringing on big asset managers um, uh, from all over the world with assets under management of at least half a billion dollars to get a node on the system and validate different projects as they come in. They will also validate transactions and they will also underwrite transactions. So they'll, they'll vote with their wallet, right? With a proof of asset uh, or you know, basically a proof of stake mechanism. So that's something we're building in 2022. We already started building the infrastructure for regulation compliance in the UAE. Uh, 30 seconds back. left. Oh my God, you scared me. Perfect, because we're almost done. My, my co-founder's um, background is in IT. We have an amazing global team, but the majority of us are in Israel. The company is actually a Delaware um, registered company. We have an amazing board of advisors, including former CEO of the Tel Aviv Stock Exchange. As you see, we come from the, from the real, real world. Uh, we do have a few crypto uh, savvy people like myself. I've been in the blockchain space and also Yuval, my co-founder has been in the blockchain space for about five years. But the majority of our other members and advisors come from the real estate world. This is the, the, our partnerships. And that's it. We're in the middle of our seed roll, in the end of our seed round. We, it's pretty much subscribed by now, but we could add another two, three hundred thousand dollars $300,000. Thank you so much. Thank you, Yael. Thanks a lot. And I'm glad that to see that more and more uh, female founders and co-founders. Uh, you remember a few years ago, we had these concerns that in crypto world, only one or two percent of uh, female are involved. Uh, yeah. Also, I see a much better uh, balance right now. So Thank any questions question. from investors? Uh, yeah, a couple for me quickly. Um, uh, who, who was it that's um, put in the initial term sheet forward? And how much are you guys burning per month with, with the team that big? Right, so right now, $700,000 was put in by a, a VC called BC. Um, BC. They're an Israeli-based uh, VC with presence in the US. We had um, an, a family office 
come in with 50 grand, an accelerator in California called Dojo to come in with 50 grand and another 60 from, from angels. That's the money that came in. We have another, um, another 150 coming in this month from a syndicate in Canada and um, another a syndicate in Israel. Um, so that's the money that came in and secured. We have a term sheet of a million from an angel uh, in the crypto and real estate space. And uh, what was the other question? And, and uh, what are you burning uh, per month with, with uh, that burning. team size? Right, right. So we're burning around fifty thousand dollars. We're very, very lean. A few invest, a few team members are you getting equity and deferred payment only. Um, you know, obviously we negotiated some some really good terms, but yeah, the team I think is the strongest thing that we have here. And I'm not just saying that, but it's, it's the team because they're pros. They're real pros because, you know, they come from traditional industries. They're tired of, uh, of working in a corporation and they come to work with us because it's more fun. And we have cookies. And, uh, an additional one. Um, what, is, what is the burn scale to post-close? Great question. So right now it's at 50. It's going to be 120 because we're scaling our R&D too. We're hiring three new engineers. Okay. Gotcha. Brilliant. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? So I guess we will keep it for private uh, negotiation. Sure. Thanks a lot. All right, thanks. Thank you very much. Sure. And uh, another founder I want to give a word right now. He's from France, Olivier Lemoyne, and the, the co-founder of French Digital Reserve Startup. So, Olivier, are you here? Your, your sound is not working somehow. I don't hear you. Please uh, remove your headphones. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Perfect. Right now, yes. Please uh, start sharing your deck. Okay. Thank you very much for attending. Um, all right. Do you see my screen? Um, it is uh, black. Oh, yes, right now, yes. Okay, <clears throat> I try to be uh, very short. Uh, thank you for attending. Um, excuse my accent if it's, uh, it's a bit too bad, but I hope uh, understandable to, to everyone. So we have developed uh, an algorithmic trading, um, an algorithm and a new ecosystem able to uh, perform any token on the market. So um, the team uh, is a bit uh, oldy but goody. Uh, we have um, many advisors coming from um, companies uh, have been working previously. And uh, the algorithm we have created um, helped us to launch um, a free uh, token recently in the market with um, proven successes. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going a bit too fast. Um, and uh, the, the results were um, over expectations. And we have, uh, uh, in less than a month, exceeded 200%, uh, 300% of performance. And now um, many clients have uh, asked us to um, design and market our offer to the market. So now, uh, as you know, we have uh, four uh, main ways to, to access to the crypto market. And we are particularly interested in the, the digital um, decentralized exchange uh, because uh, for the rest, um, apart from the, the, the fiat desk, the public doesn't even know uh, about their existence. So the, the main purpose is to industrialize our concept. The um, technology needs to be uh, developed uh, in terms of uh, artificial intelligence and data aggregations. Um, there is existing um, at the moment a professional offer in terms of artificial intelligence and algorithm to boost the tokens on the market, but nothing exists uh, yet for the digital exchange, uh, such as uh, Uniswap or SushiSwap, uh, this type of uh, exchanges. And the problem is that uh, many investors at the present time are coming from the um, retail market. We've hired during three years uh, approximately 300 private investors 
for a market cap of uh, uh, $3.5 million today. But um, to jump up to the next level, uh, the market needs to be um, designed uh, with a custodian um, AML KYC uh, access for um, professional investors coming from banks and other sectors. And for it, uh, we'd like to, um, to, to, to jump up to the next level. So that explains why uh, in a peer-to-peer -peer market, we'd like to um, now offer uh, um, our investors um, an easier way to access to our uh, artificial intelligence and algorithm offer through a, a simple API. And for it, um, as you know, uh, in a peer-to-peer -peer market, you know how it works. You open your MetaMask and then send your Ethereum on Uniswap. This is an example, but not only not the only one. <clears throat> and for it, uh, the results of our robots have, have, have been amended and have proved that um, during three years of experience now, we have uh, reached our targets and the targets of our community. And for it, now we'd like to, um, you know, to jump to, to another level. This is uh, the type of information that any public can access to on Dex tools, for instance. Here you can see the impulse token we have launched for a month. We started at $17 open price, and now it's reaching more than $300. So that explains um, the, the solidity and the robustness of our algorithm. And uh, this is not the only token we have launched. We also have launched a FDR token and also another token called OVOA for a Brazilian client, which has exceeded $2,000 in less than three weeks. For it, um, the market now, um, essentially asset managers and, um, and the banking center is asking for us, okay, can you replicate that model to any token on the market? And can you make it um, accessible for the professional market. So definitely, that's the, the promise we are about to design. Uh, our promise is about, okay, we can promise you 30% um, overperformance compared to the Ethereum market. And we only trade the volumetric market. We don't care about the ups and downs of the market. And our API is replicable on every exchange. So now um, the ecosystem is working in a simple way. The buyback system is we reinvest constantly the profits we get from the algorithm on the buyback platform to buy new Ethereum and put them in the liquidity pool. And then with the stacking, we're getting more profits and we invest these profits into the algorithm again and the algorithm is again making profits, which are reinvested again in the liquidity pool. And that model definitely allows us to doesn't care at all of the moves in the market and constantly follow a growing line for our customers. This trading system, sorry, I'm exceeding time. No, that's okay. 30 seconds left, so you can uh, continue. Okay, so I can go forward. Just to tell you that uh, we do intend to uh, create first um, a trading platform, a binary options in the crypto space with signals for our clients to aggregate more clients coming from several horizons and then to make it more uh, profitable for the, the model we have built in particular, we are artificial intelligence back to our algorithm. And for it, our competitors are already on the market, but they don't do what we do. And um, what the market is looking for now is to, uh, okay, we've been uh, investing in the OTC market. Now we go to the derivative market and we, we, we would like to, in the near future, create the same thing for the derivative market. So thank you for your attention. And uh, if you have uh, questions, uh, uh, I will be happy to answer back to, to your questions. Thanks a lot, Olivia. Um, thanks. Great job. Any questions from investors? Oliver, you're usually the one who has a lot of questions. 
Yeah, this okay. one, uh, I need to dive into this one quite a lot deeper, I think. It's um, not an instant one to take in, so. Mm -hmm. From me at the minute, I guess the other guys should have some stuff. Good. Uh, any other investors has uh, have any questions? Etienne, I see you. I'm kind of, I'm kind of confused here. What actually is the product? Because you mentioned a couple of tokens, an algo trading bot. Um, if you would summarize your pitch in one tweet. And I would even challenge you there, the old Twitter with maximum 140 characters. If you could summarize this whole presentation in one old school tweet, what would that be? What is the product you're actually pitching? Uh, the product we are pitching is the algorithm itself and the, the amendment we'd like to, uh, to, to put on it. So you're raising money for an algorithm that is trading on DEX tools or, or DEXs. Yes, mainly. Not only, but mainly, yes. Okay, so if someone invests, what are they getting? Is that that impulse token? What are we talking about? How does that impulse token, how does that fit into all of this? Uh, yeah, um, he's investing for uh, uh, allowing us to create a new token, uh, but uh, with a holding, a new holding, not located in France, but in Estonia. And uh, the purpose is to raise a new token. Um, i give an example. Uh, for instance, uh, at uh, 10 cents with 1 million copies uh, for a pre-launch uh, price of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, 2 or $3, dollars, I don't know, and uh, uh, an official launch at uh, $10, for instance, All right? So the idea is to raise more funds in order to finance the development of the technology itself we'd like to, to, to do, because at this time, it's still a, a bit... Uh, um, artisanal in a way, you see, <clears throat> and experimental. But for the market, uh, the prof professional market, we need to improve more uh, the technology. And by the way, uh, at the same time, we, uh, we'd like to open a binary option platform in cryptocurrency only uh, to educate the market and to, um, to enlarge our community, our end users community. Did it become clearer for you, Etienne? Uh, I'm still confused. So the algo has a token. No, no, the algo is, is a, it's an ecosystem. And uh, with, with whom we have launched successfully three tokens at this time. They are listed on Craig's 2024 and uh, other listings. And the, the, the main topic is about um, after several demands coming from the market, uh, guys, uh, as you are non-custodial for the moment, you need to, to, be, to design your offer uh, for, for the professional market um, coming from four main segments, verticals, and uh, the banking sector, the B2B sector, B2B2C sector, and um, the private uh, investors. So um, today, the technology is an algorithm, um, house-made algorithm. We need to aggregate that algorithm to an artificial intelligence, much more developed uh, than today. And tomorrow, um, we'd like to, to, to open uh, um, a binary platform, cryptocurrency platform, to, um, to aggregate more uh, customers than today. Today, we have 300 customers with an average uh, um, bag of uh, um, two or three Ethereums for the lowest one, up to 10 to 15 Ethereums for the biggest one. All right, thanks so much. You're welcome. Thanks, Etienne, for a great question. Thank you, Olivier. And uh, I think that uh, indeed uh, uh, your project is very complex, so it's needed to be digested and uh, investors can approach you privately with uh, a lot of more questions. Thanks a lot for your pitch. You're welcome. Thanks, sir. You too. And I want to invite a startup from uh, USA, Varier Tech, and uh, the founder, Nikki Ram. So, Nikki, Hi. please. Hi. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just going to zoom through this because um, I, I, I made the mistake of double booking and so my apologies. 
so I'm just going to give the um, uh, the the overview about basically essentially who we are. Uh, we're a company that uh, we're based in Silicon Valley, and uh, we work in post-disaster areas, namely. But now we're moving more into jump-starting stalled uh, economies. Um, what you're able to do with our company is you're able to not just track your aid and investment, but you're able to see its impact instantly. So we are a space, like I mentioned, well, I didn't mention, but we are actually a space and blockchain company. And we have a blockchain um, software ecosystem and that provides accountability and transparency for investments and project management all done in real time. Um, so um, just a little uh, brief overview, 3.6 billion is lost, uh, trillion, sorry, every year uh, due to lack of transparency and accountability. Why the benefits that we offer as a company is um, we can verify impact and progress. Uh, we can show efficiency of how the money is utilized. We can do this all in real time. Uh, and essentially we can mitigate the loss of capital, which uh, is a big thing for many countries that have stalled economies. Uh, why we beat the competition is we have three patented uh, processes. One is a process that where we onboard partners who beat out national average. We also have a blockchain platform timeline that amalgamates um, um, all the different technologies that we have. And um, we have a current per a UN project that we're tying up um, to, to be, to be um, coming live later on this year. And we have do two government contracts, um, one with the US government and uh, another with a, uh, a Latin American government. Um, so like I said before, it's not about a tracking, it's about jump-starting stalled, stalled economies. We've been in this field for more than um, four years, five years. And one of my partners is actually on this call, Elena. Um, so I'm leader, he, yes, I'm here. Crypto chips. Uh, so um, we are able to, like I said, this is our, our ecosystem. And uh, what we are looking for for an investor is because now we deal with countries, we are able to understand that in order for, for example, infrastructure projects or healthcare projects, uh, we're looking for seasoned investors to be partners with us. And we're looking to how we can tokenize our business model. Um, uh, if you're interested, by all means, reach out and we can do a live demo and MVP with you. And um, yes, uh, that's pretty much about it. Uh, we have a great team. We have um, Mike Harris, who started the world's first online bank. Uh, we have an astrosurgeon uh, and we have a, uh, an amazing team. We were actually winners of our respective countries for Singularity University. And, um, and also I, I was so um, honored to be part of the uh, member of the crew of Crypto Chicks based in Toronto. Um, and by all means, if you could reach out and want to reach out and you can help us scale to the next level, that would be great. Thank you. I'm so sorry for the short notice. Uh, it, it, it's, it's okay. Uh, you made a good pitch. It it could be better, <laughs> but uh, uh, it's all the way uh, to improvement, you know. And uh, yeah, uh, I would love uh, to listen to the questions from investors here. Well, if they understood anything, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have a, a few. Um, firstly, I, I don't see why this. Uh, like, I like the idea, and I understand that there's definitely a need for it, but like. One, how big are the margins like uh, on your profit side? Um, you know, because the goal is to save money. So, right, if you're providing a service that saves money, like for the upside, for the the end, the capital, the capital at the end is obviously less profit on your end. Um, additionally, why does this like need a token? I don't understand that part. 
So basically, first of all, just to firstly answer your, your first question, uh, you're asking about, if I'm correct, Oliver's how we save money for the government. Is that what you're saying, asking? No, obviously, like you're saving the money, right? But obviously, you still have to make money. So like, I'm presuming, okay, we save you X amount, we take X amount of what we save you, right? That's going to be the general business model of this, correct? Yeah, so basically, um, the it's a SaaS based business model. So um, we give it to the governments for free. And how we make our money is, for example, on procurement deals. So um, let's say some of the projects are worth about 12, five to 12 million dollars US. We take 0.51% of that. Now the tokenization of where, I'm, where we're looking to go is because um, we are thinking and we're interested in it, of creating a fund for each country. So for example, if there's infrastructure projects or a power grid that need to be done, we're asking people, we're trying, we're looking at this model where people are able to invest in the country and help rebuild it. And uh, the repayment is obviously it's long-term, but um, we are looking to issue tokens. It's something that we are unfamiliar with, but we are looking to find the right partners. We've already done um, the groundwork. We have the partners, we have the, the key stakeholders. We know exactly what needs to be done, how to be done. Um, and we, yeah, so yeah, I hope this is an, has answered my question, your question, but yeah. That's what uh, yeah, and uh, another one, I don't know if I'm mistaken on this. On one slide, it mentioned a stable coin. Um, will that be your own? And if so, like, like how are you going to go into the fact that like, actually keeping a, like, what is the need for a stable coin? It, you may as well just use one that's already out there, if, unless it's going right. to be a, a so, different version, which then obviously you impact with loss of peg issues. Right. So basically what happens is that uh, when the federal government um, pa uh, moves money along. A lot of it is lost to banks. So about 7.2, 7.6%. So we have, because we deal with all the stakeholders, we know exactly that if we are able to transfer money from wallet to wallet, um, and my developer was saying that if it could be pegged in, in cryptocurrency to a stable coin, like a USD coin, that would save money. Um, so, yeah, I okay. don't. Gotcha, gotcha. He's not on the call, but uh, but that's in essence the the fifty foot, fifty thousand foot uh, overview on it. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, I understand those. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Oliver. Any other questions from investors here? So as you see, Nikki is looking not uh, only for money, for cash investments. She's looking for an investor who can become angel advisor and uh, guide them, help them to develop the project. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks, Nikki. I think that uh, you can follow up with investors privately later on. And uh, the last but not least for today, another amazing founder, uh, co-founder, sorry, of QP startup from Estonia, Alina Kornienko. So Alina, please take your stage. Um, hello everyone. Um, please advise if you see my, if you see my screen. No, yes. And now? No, but yeah. Um, yeah, so my name is Alina. I'm the COO and co-founder of QP. And so at QP, we are working on providing a unique personal banking experience and we're enabling successful synergies between blockchain and traditional banking worlds. So what is QP? We are a digital payment solution that consolidates bank cards, accounts, wallets, so everything of a financial within one app. And we've gone further than Google Pay and Apple Pay to develop an AI solution that chooses the right card at the moment of payment. And today, as the pandemic is still strong around the world, we're working on improving and expanding contactless payment solutions and, for example, contactless IBAN account opening uh, with only an 
a phone and a document and yourself to, to, to open this account and to operate with it with traditional and also with digital currencies. So we also help people to learn and hype on this um, B2C rate and, and so on. So QP was founded back in 2017 by me and my co-founders. We are tech enthusiasts and we have over 15 years of uh, financial and IT management of companies with over $1 billion annual revenue. And so back in 2017, we were a simple crypto wallet with just two or three um, main cryptocurrencies added and integrated exchange but we've grown since that time uh, to build a financial super app uh, that would that is blockchain based of course and that combines all the financial and social solutions not only for banking card consolidation but also NAA based recurrent payments expenses and investment automatization gift card consolidation planning solutions Solution and many other things like P2P landing and so on. And so since the launch of our first crypto wallet back in 2018, we've won over such important European and domestic markets for us as Germany, UK, Spain, Norway, Denmark, Poland, um, and so on. We're extremely present in CIS countries in Russia, and we're now expanding our services to Latin America and later this year to Africa. Uh, so as as you can see, uh, in 2020, we had a transaction volume of over 20, uh, 38 million euro uh, with a and monthly revenue of around 80k and with expenses of uh, 78k per month. So we're fully uh, su supporting ourselves with our revenue and we're uh, constantly growing in terms of revenue and in terms of services we're integrating and trying to provide to our um, to our customers uh, and since January this year we are growing our net revenue 20 percent uh, every month and so also as you can see by um, 2024 uh, we want to uh, we want to reach these big numbers um, and get a significant um, market, a significant market niche uh, all around the world by um, providing these uh, consolidated solutions to our customers around the globe. And so uh, we are now uh, looking for additional investments as we are not only expanding to other regions, but we are uh, expanding our licensing. We will be, by the end of this year, uh, getting our own EMI license in the UK. We will be, uh, by the end of this year, portal um, emitting our own banking cards to our customers and we'll have many more services going on so i will be extremely happy to answer any of your questions and thank you for listening and staying until my last pitch thanks a lot alina uh, thank you and uh, welcome investors with the questions this is yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you for that um do you custody crypto assets for your users no. So uh, how is they custodied? Um, actually, so everything is kept on the client side. We are a, um, a window to the blockchain. So we do not um, hold and keep clients assets. So do you and we are fully and we're fully decentralized in terms of the blockchain technologies. So again, all the information is kept on the client side. So um, we believe it's much more secure than all the other solutions. Right. So what wallets do you integrate with or centralized exchanges or like how we have our own exchange? And uh, people and customers can either open a wallet in the digital currencies we support with us, and uh, the customer can also upload the wallets from other services, digital wallets from other services. Okay, so would those just be hot wallets then? Uh, sorry? Would they just be hot wallets, wallets connected to the internet, or can you use like a ledger, say? No, ledger not only just the, the internet. Okay. 
do you see that as an issue long term where most people really shouldn't be custodying their assets on a hot wallet? Um, I think if we will see it soon as an important issue, we will of course be working on that. It's, it's not a big problem for us. And I wanted also to highlight that we are currently supporting only the most, I would say, trusted digital currencies. So Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Litecoin. So we're not supporting tokens for now. For example, so we really say in terms of those digital currencies that we believe might become not only kind of a trading um, instrument, but also those currencies who can become payment method and so on. Yeah, and uh, does it? Uh, yeah, that clarifies. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, other questions? Etienne, Alex? Patrick, Oliver, I know Oliver has uh, to run very soon, but we are already finishing. How much money are you guys raising, Alina? Um, actually, for now, I can't say the exact um, the exact we, number because we can we sign an NDA, NDA on the call here. Uh, yeah, because we are we are having a hard commit now for a um, for um, I would say half of this round so um as soon as we um as this commitment will be will become signed we'll um, we will be able to say how much of the round is left and at what valuation so you're saying someone is getting ready to take half of the round yes. so what if everyone on this call is like hey let's join and take the rest of it how much more would that be um, under the NDA, I will be able to, to tell you this. I'm, I'm sorry because we're live. It's kind of what about What about if we all together on the call put in a combined term sheet and kick the other guy out? <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say we will still, because we are um, really <laughs> constantly growing, we will be able to onboard I think everyone who is interested in joining our journey and in helping us to develop this solution. So I guess the next plan is to make a group with all the investors participating here and <laughs> QP founders and just uh, uh, take over the market, uh, say bye to traditional banking and uh, open the green light uh, to crypto transactions. I'm in. Let's stick it on stick it on Polkadot and we can raise 50 million, yeah? <laughs> okay. Um, uh, uh, any other questions that uh, QP could ask uh, without an NDA? <laughs> uh, I will be happy to chat with all of you to sign an NDA and to proceed with some deeper discussion in terms of valuation, the uh, round volume, etc. Okay, let's do the following. Uh, we will anyway send uh, to every investor all the startups with all the pitch decks from today's session and with all their startup profiles on in mind. I will personally contact each and every investor to ask with whom of the founders I should introduce you. I already started doing uh, introducing uh, literally during the session in Telegram. Uh, and um, yeah, we will uh, follow up very, very shortly with everyone and uh, help you to close the deals as soon as possible. And uh, thanks a lot, Alina, uh, for being Thank uh, you, Nelly. amazing. And uh, uh, before saying goodbye to everyone uh, who is here and who is watching us online, I want to ask the uh, advice from the investors participating here. Guys, please, can you share at least one advice uh, for startups that were pitching today and that are watching us in YouTube, what uh, is the core when uh, they are pitching to DeFi, blockchain and crypto VCs like you? Uh, what should they uh, focus on during their pitch uh, to make it even more efficient and uh, clear for the next time? 
who wants to start? Maybe Oliver, because Oliver has a hard stop in a minute. Yeah, I would say um, make sure you always have a plan to pivot if you're going to be in the crypto industry because things change on a weekly basis. Um, so being stuck in your original business model is uh, only going to be able to sort of get you funded for a short period of time. Sounds super smart. And even uh, above just uh, speaking about pitch, that's great. Thanks a lot, Oliver. And I know you have to run, so... Thanks a lot for joining it. No worries, anytime. Um, nice to meet everyone else. It's been emotional and uh, I'll see you all next time. Thank you. I echo, yeah. Yeah. I echo that. I would probably it's add, uh, yeah. If, yeah. If think really hard about whether you need a token and if you do, whether you need to launch it now because once you launch it, you can't unlaunch it. And then you have to manage a boatload of stakeholders and you have to you know, constantly worry about the tokenomics and there's 24 seven casino that's happening in the background. Um, so, yeah. I love this advice, Iran. Indeed, uh, I've seen some cases where uh, you, you don't need uh, a token, but they still launch it. So it, it's amazing. Thanks a lot. Uh, it's really smart. Uh, who else wants to add uh, some wisdom here? Well, probably me. Uh, it's really difficult to recommend something, but uh, probably uh, I can uh, tell what you should avoid. I strongly recommend uh, avoid uh, uh, to focus on uh, this crazy bull market and avoid crazy money. Because uh, I believe uh, startups should focus on strategic investors, on strategy and, and their products. Because they should understand that if they take this money, they they definitely have commitments uh, for the uh, community, for the investors, uh, and uh, for a lot of people around them. So please don't focus on crazy money. Don't try to get as much as you can right now. Try to do good product uh, and uh, focus uh, on it. Oh, thank you, Alex. With two my hands, I vote for it. Definitely, it's uh, it's true, and it's so true. It should be written in stone, indeed. I see it. Yen agrees with you very, very much. <laughs> I guess the last thing I would add to that, because I, I need to run also, is um, have a plan for post token launch. It's a lot of what I see is um, teams and founders gearing up to a token sale or an IDO, or whatever you want to call it. And uh, there's nothing for after uh, the token launch. So then um, it's almost nothing in the pipeline um, happening after. So it's kind of like teams fall into some, some um, I would say, dead country uh, where there's nothing happening. Um, community drops by 40%, 50%. Um, because people have a short attention span, right? They would join your community leading up to the sale and after the sale, they just run to another project. Um, so almost everyone that joins crypto gets some sort of ADD, right? Um, short attention span. Um, so make sure you have something and uh, whether it's uh, development, um, whether it's partnerships, something to keep that engine going. Um, because you're going to get into some bearish markets, uh, the market is going to turn eventually at some point, and you should have a plan for that also. So that's all I want to add. Amazing, Katian. Thanks so much. And by the way, if you didn't see yet interview with Etienne, where he shared a lot of extra. Oh, there. <laughs> we will put it. In my the... apologies. Uh, my apologies for that. <laughs> yeah. So, and Patrick, uh, uh, the last advice from your side, and then we finish the session for today. Right, I might just have to echo it in because that's really insightful. So you have to build with the post-launch in mind because uh, the people in this space, uh, for the lack of better word, we are quite degenerate. You know? So our, 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 our attention span is rather short and we have to capture our attention, even especially if you're looking for user adoption post-launch. And actually, if you design your tokenomics in a sense that you are designing it for the community, that should usually work. And because tokenomics are actually very sticky and if you design it well, it should run. A, it should go a long way. Yep, and I, I guess that concludes uh, what I have to share. Patrick, yeah, for sure. Thank you. It's amazing summary for this session. And uh, thank you, everyone, all the investors and all the startups who pitched today, who made it happen. 
uh, guys, uh, I, I already know that we will have quite a number of deals after this session. I, I'm, uh, I can't stay waiting to announce it loudly, uh, but uh, we will do it later. I will go now to follow up with each of you and uh, make introductions and uh, uh, help to make these deals come true. Thanks All right, guys. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Speak soon. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you, Nelly. Bye. Bye.